And, and I, I had to start this 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 episode off with the most important thing. This is more important than money, business. I'm gonna dare to say it's more important. And don't don't yell at me yet. Than family, wife, husband, God, universe. It's the most important topic that we could possibly talk about, and it's the beer game. <laughs> So anyone watching, I invite you to vote. And I have a feeling I'm going to lose this one because I always have really respected your beard. I feel like uh, like mine hits here. Like you and you, some of your photos, you have a huge beard. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the beard game for like 15 seconds is like you've had a beard, I think, your whole life, you said. Most of it. Yeah. I did I the goatee you- for a while. And I look back at those pictures. I'm like, oh, what a young, immature boy I was. And I had to let... I had to unleash the beard. So yeah, it's been, really good. Like it's, it's like while, very kingly. It's like kingly. Yeah. Like you know but how to Le- drew groove. Uh, this it. is the Le- I call it the Leonidas look. Leonidas look. <laughs> King, okay. King right. Leonidas from Three Hundred. There you go, right there. I, I may not have his abs, but I definitely have the beard. You've got the beard. I feel like I'll lose that vote. I'm okay losing to um to a man who surpasses my beard game. So I can I can I can learn a few <laughs> lessons from you with with grooming the beard. Um. So, so that out of the way, which I, I do um, think is really important, is um, the idea of the fampreneur. Yes. And I know your story. I read your story. I'm sure the audience doesn't know your story, but it looks like, um, I'm not going to say the, the typical, but many stories model themselves of like, you, you built some businesses, you lost everything. I'm sure you had to ask yourself some very difficult questions and not sure if you were neglecting family and the things that were important at least that's the story that most of us go through and then we realize what's actually important and i have a feeling that that's where this beautiful fanpreneur happened and one thing i wanted to mention before we got into that was i don't have a family and probably many of the people listening don't either but what i really wanted to make this about was whether that's family or other really important things in your life i feel like it's very easy to ignore it waiting until and how many times i've said that well once we do this then we'll go have fun and that fun never came and then when i started flipping that of i'll have fun and then we'll go do great things together at the same time um i got both without waiting for something so uh, give us a little insight about your story um yeah and we'll get into the fanpreneur idea cool man so we could go we can go way back. We can go kind of mid story, but really, man, growing up, I was always entrepreneurial. So my first business, I was 15 years old. I was installing car stereos for friends and you okay. know, I always like gadgets and electronics and stuff like that. So I did it for my car. I had my first car at 15, no license, no nothing. That's so uh, funny. Which- so you must've been installing. I was 17, 18 when I did car audio, but that was, uh, 10, 12, 14, 15 years ago. So like those screens were just coming out, the boom boxes oh, yeah. and amplifiers were really, but you must have been installing yeah. cars maybe this around that time 90s. or just before 90s. So what, yeah, what did they have the then? 90s. Like just CD decks. So we what we had so it was the transition of the pullout. So you the sleeve is in there and you would pull out your radio and have like a little mini briefcase. That's right. That That's was right. the first kind of portable car stereo. And then they replaced that with just a face. It was a right. face off deck. That's right. Then they start getting fancier and now they're digital and then you have the screens. So by yeah, the time they got the to the screens, yeah, by the time they got that, it was probably early 200. So I was already out, out of the game by then. Now I was in playing big boy business. Yeah, big, so, big bigger toys. Okay, okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I like started it. that and uh, really, man, and this is literally for everybody listening. Uh, there was an issue. There was a problem that I identified and I was like, I could be the solution to that problem. My friends wanted to install radios. They wanted better sound systems. I figured it out for me and I was like, whoa, I can use this skill set to help other people because they're going to have to find the solution one way or another. Why not me? Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. I started doing that and that entrepreneurial bug was definitely a big part of my life. And um, and so just kind of growing, growing growing a little bit older than that college really wasn't for me. I did some college and I didn't finish and I just wanted to get in the game. And so my first business was a mortgage company and I, I grew that mortgage company to multiple six figures. I was what, 21, 22 years old. So I got married at 2000, started my business in 2000. So literally I've been married to business as long as my, my wife. And um, you know, at, at that time, the reason I wanted to start a business to begin with is because I've always valued freedom. 
And up until that point, even though I was young, up until that point, people would put limits on me. You're in this role. You can't exceed this role. You can't exceed this pay. You, you can only take the time off that we allow you to have. You can only work so many sick days unless you're not going to get paid. And I was like, man, this is a lot of restrictions here. And I'm not a restriction kind of guy. I'm a freedom kind of guy. So I'm like, I need a different path. And so I got in, in the mortgage industry because somebody gave me an opportunity. I'm like, yeah, opportunity, I'm in. I wasn't a math guy. I wasn't a professional suit and tie wearing dude. Like I was a 20, yeah. 21 year old, you know? Yeah. But I grew those businesses because I loved the game of marketing and, and client acquisition and relationship right. building. And that really, from that time, 2000, to this interview is being done in 2021, for me, that's what I built every business that I've had on is relationships and the ability right. to leave relationships better off after me than they were before me. And so did that, had marketing workshops, grew those two businesses. And then uh, then you alluded to this earlier, um, when I lost everything, like we were making really good money in our in our early 20s. And we got to a point that the real estate market shifted and our mortgage companies were going from highly profitable, growing. And I had 20 employees by the time I was like 23, 24 to literally nothing. And my wife's salary at the church, which wasn't very much. So we lost our house, the cars, the BMWs, the, all the stuff. We lost it all. And it put me in a deep depression for a while. And that's the truth of this, this game, this entrepreneurial game yeah. that a lot of people don't talk about is like it's all glamour and glory but that's not the case like what is the cost for the glamour and glory so so then that's where i shifted into coaching because i realized you know there's a skill set that i developed in mortgages yes there's a mortgage and the financial skill sets but how did i grow those and how many people right now could benefit from me pouring into them what i've discovered over the last eight nine years of being in this industry and so since then, I've been in, uh, I've been a coach and a, and a mentor to a lot of awesome people. But it started with a lot of stripes and scars yeah. and bruises, and uh, yeah. and that was kind of the the making of a superhero, which all of you are listening today. It's like the making of how it, I find it so interesting when I talk to when I, when I was um. I don't know. I was like seven or something. My family was not to get into religion. They were Christian and uh, a Catholic. And because it was pushed on me, I went through a huge self-exploration of religion and Christianity and Catholicism. And I came to my own conclusion of what spirituality is. That's a whole different topic. But I remember being eight and telling my parents, I'm going to be a priest. And they were all proud of their little son because he's going to be a priest. <laughs> and I obviously went the complete opposite way after high school. But when I reflected on that, of why I wanted to do that, I saw people lining up after after church to um get help and advice and wisdom from the priest and i loved how like kind of simply he lived and just kind of like how he just always served and i think after high school i'm like well i want to make money too so how can i blend the two together and then usually there's a mass amount of pain and someone finds their purpose and it sounds like almost every coach not all but many have some kind of moment where they realize they just want to serve give back help whatever that may be. So it sounds like you had that dark period that I want to touch on a little bit more um, about, because you mentioned BMW's house money. Were you at the time, uh, I'll call it un unconscious to, or when it came to money materialism, did, did it uh, define you? Was that part of your identity and losing that? Was that also a painful process of finding what's more important? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. That's where a lot of people find themselves is that they pursue yeah. the things instead of a pursuit for deeper self. Yeah. They pursue the things and you come to find out you get the things. And I had more money at the time, you know, it wasn't billions of dollars, but had more money than anybody in my life at 22, yeah. 23. I had, you know, disposable income. I, it, I had the stuff and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I made it. But deep inside, why is there still a gap? Right. Why is there an emptiness? Why is the stuff that I thought I'm working for, I have the stuff and how come I'm still not happy? And why is there still a gap? What, what is it? What am I missing here? I thought this was it. Definitely wasn't it. And so when that's gone and you've placed your identity in creating success or being a success, the moment you've, you're 
previous version of what success meant is gone, who am I? I'm gone then because that I was so tied to the to the the performance aspect of me instead of the purpose aspect of me. I was so tied to that. Then the, when the performance is no longer there, I'm a shell of who I, I well, I believe that I'm a shell of who I was. And the truth of I, it is it removed all the things that hide me from me. Yeah, all the noise. And that was the birth of having the space to really realize I lost everything that I thought was everything, but the meaningful things are very much intact and they didn't go anywhere. Right. Yeah, I really respect you as and I think you're a, a great coach. I've had the pleasure of a being coached by amazing coaches, uh, meeting coaches and just through through industries and through different masterminds, through different uh, um, get togethers and flying around and just even being able to work with amazing coaches. And almost all of them have gone through a moment where everything they thought was important was taken or they lost it. And I think it was a gift, but they perceived it as and I, I went through that, too. And then you realized who you actually are, what you actually want to yeah. do. And when you go through that, I feel like there's a belief that's built that no matter what happens, I know I'm going to be okay because I, I already have proof of that. And I think that's what makes you such a powerful coach. And I think you've got so much, I'm sure you just touch people on a level that if you didn't go through that, there's no way you could, you could, there's no way. No way. No yeah. way. Like I had to go, you know, it, it was, you know, my pain was for other people's purpose. Yeah. And that's how I see it is like, man, what an asset that is going through it. Didn't yeah. feel like it. You know, yeah. That was, it sucked. You know, I called to question a lot of things in my life. You know, my faith is really important to me. You know that about me. My yeah. faith is really important. My family is really important. And it almost destroyed my family. And it's because I wasn't certain in who I was. So I let all the things define who I was and they, they really don't reflect yeah. who I am. You know, yeah. And so when you get when you get clear about that and when you own it, you know, one of the things that I like sharing is man, just own your awesome. Like we're so incredible, we are so unique, we are so valuable and irreplaceable. If we only just embrace that and stop second guessing, I'm you know, I'm a big believer that instead of you know doubting your beliefs, let's start doubting our let's make a habit out Mm. of doubting our doubts. Why don't we do that? What would happen then? Oh, you'd be operating from truth. And the truth is you're awesome. The truth is you have something that would dramatically impact humanity. That is truth. No matter what external circumstances happen, you cannot remove, it doesn't become false. Yeah. Why do you think so do people, including coaches, including myself at times, I was like, how many times I thought I'm like, I'm Steve Jobs. I'm, I am so successful. I, I hit like $10,000 a month and I was like, <laughs> I have it made. And then someone came along and was like, dude, what like I remember this conversation is um this was actually a Jason Capital mastermind, but anyways, and I was like, dude, I make ten thousand dollars. And someone's like, a day? And I was like, no, a month. And they're like, like, that's not you shouldn't celebrate that. Like there's more. And I was like, shit. And then I made it a a habit of getting around people who dwarf me, not because I want to compete with them, just because they bring me up. And it sounds like you just naturally are constantly pulling people to what's possible. Why do you think so many people is it society? Is it upbringing? Is it conditioning? Is it news? Is it media where they have lost that, that belief that they are special or that, that they are unique? I think we're born with knowing that. And then little by little, whether it's in our, our environments, our upbringing, our outside circumstances begin to mold a worldview for all of us. And so like when we ba- get back to that childlike wonder, that childlike innocence that isn't like polluted with all this garbage, man, you start realizing like, man, that 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 awesomeness in me hasn't gone anywhere. It's been there the whole time. I've just been hiding it. There's a there's a there's a scripture in the Bible, and we're not going to get really religious, but it's something I've been really reflecting on a lot in the last couple of weeks and you know sharing it with a couple of my clients and stuff like that and there's in this scripture this man says to Jesus he says lord i believe but help my unbelief lord i believe but help my unbelief like how does that even work so i've been reflecting on it and i and i i came to the conclusion that it's it's not that we don't have sufficient belief like we have 
as much belief as necessary for us to step into who we truly are and what we're capable of doing. It's that we've given a megaphone to our unbelief. Right. And it just drowns out. Like if you think of yeah. being on a date night and you're in a restaurant and you, there's this beautiful classic music and it's just like a romantic atmosphere, but then there's a riot outside. You're, you're gonna, your environment completely changes, even right. though you have the elements to have this beautiful romantic mem- memorable right. evening. It's just, it's completely distracted, completely like put aside towards the noise that's right outside your door. Right. Like so right. much so that you're in the presence of this peace and serenity and outside things take you out of the presence that you already inhabit. Why is that? Because that's a lot louder. Now, is it possible for you to be in that restaurant in this environment and drown out the exterior stuff? Yeah, that's possible. But it takes most people, first of all, don't know that it's an option or that that's a thing to do. They're just like, OK, I'm living by default. So whatever my environment right. dictates, that's what I'm going to do. So which yeah. is why I love your 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 podcast and your videos is because you're te- you're expanding what's what people believe is possible, which I absolutely right. love. Like That's right. a great gift to give to the world. Right. And it's possible to drown out that exterior stuff, the unbelief, the things that you've heard, the things you've been told about what is possible, who you are, who you're not, all that stuff. Like it's possible for that to have zero meaning in your life. Right. So funny you mentioned the uh, the Bible. We get so many different um, types of guests and so many different uh, beliefs and views on life and even our clients, like how many different religions and beliefs and environments they come from. And I love how um, there could be 220 people in a room and all agree, I think, on a fundamental thing. And what I love about, uh, I spend a lot of time studying different religious texts, including the Bible and really questioning, like, just what do I believe in? What, what fits me? And I am like, you could probably read the Bible for 50, 60 years. And every time you do, you extract some nugget, whether you're religious or you identify as religious or not. Mm-hmm. It is like, it'll blow your mind how the Napoleon Hill books and Think and Grow Rich don't touch what that spiritual text um, will teach. If you can drown out all that preconceived, uh, you know, people be like, well, Jesus stuff. I'm like, dude, drown all that out and see it for what it is. And there is so much wisdom. Oh, um, yeah. And and to me, that's beautiful. I actually just maybe over the last two, three years started uh, reading that as a, as a as a text for personal development instead of just something I had to do back in school. And it's actually yeah. unreal how many little a sentence you're just like i need to think about this for a week like what's <laughs> what is this pretty cool yeah oh absolutely yeah pretty cool so i i know you're obviously huge on the um maybe let's talk about fanpreneur just to chat about that side i know a big part of your business is helping people xyz results while maintaining and building and and enjoying a family and putting family first or you know, growing the family and i'm just going to put a little asterisk there of if anyone's listening being like i don't have kids I think that we could uh, replace that with like what's actually important, whether that's your parents or your, your, your date nights and your girlfriend or some cause that you believe in. Um, I'm guessing that a lot of people, including me, I need to watch it will not allow themselves to focus on what's important and put it off until, you know, until that person leaves them because they neglected mm-hmm. it or whatever that or they're till their kids are yeah. 18 and you have no relationship. So talk to, to us about that. Why is that so important to you? Two reasons, two reasons. Number one is because I think my family has been the, we talk about the Bible. So for me and what I've received from not only the word in the Bible, but my relationship with God, Number one, most you know, uh, personal development thing I could have ever done by far. Secondly, my family. For those of you without a family, you don't have a spouse, you don't have a loved one, perhaps you don't like, you know, you might not have children or whatever the case is. It's the people in your life that you are more, pa- you, you are incredibly passionate to do life with. Replace it with that. So don't get caught up with the family thing. For me, that's it. For a lot of people, that's it. But it's not exclusive to that. So for me, the second biggest factor that has allowed me to live this amazing life that I get to live, like I shouldn't, I don't deserve this. I shouldn't have this life that I have, but I do, which is awesome. And I think that the my family 
and putting them in the right place in my life in the hierarchy of my life has really benefited me in so many different ways. For some of you, it's your parents, or your siblings, or whatever the case is. So take it for what it is, like replace family for that, right? So that's number one, is it has done so much to the success of my business and my life and financially and like all these different areas because number one, that they have been part of my why. Who am I, not only what am I doing, but who am I doing this for? All of us could probably agree, like it would be cool to have a billion dollars, but if you have a billion dollars and you're out in a, in a piece of land that there's no one near you for 300 miles and anywhere around you, that billion dollars really isn't gonna do a whole lot because it's the people that color your life. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the people that color your life. So that's number one. And two, I really got sick and tired. And I was I was part of this story, which is like I have personal experience, but then I have observational experience as well. Really sick and tired of people cheating on their family with their business. That's plain and simple. Like kids are like, oh, my God, I can't wait to spend time with mom. I can't wait to spend time with dad. And they're like, sorry, I just have one more call. Sorry, I have this one more thing to do. Sorry, I'm writing this email campaign. Sorry, I'm recording six more videos. I can't make it to your game. I can't make it to your show. I can't do this. So business has become an excuse versus a reason. Yeah. And not to mention that I know a lot of people that their business has been the number one factor of their divorce. So it's like wrecking families. Right. Right. So I'm like, who's standing in the gap for these families? Who's standing, who's showing people that there's a different way to build a business around your ideal life or your ideal family life, as opposed to building a life around the business you've built? Yeah, so interesting. Uh, this is a um, uh, selfish question. I'm genuinely interested in this, and I'm sure people listening, if I'm interested in this, many others will be. I have been, probably for three years, really trying to understand and read and study and even had mentors uh, if we want to say um what is a man or um what's the purpose of a man or you know a man operated so there's a lot of conflicting information and i think we don't go through this rite of passage that we used to and now we have teenagers and pre-adults and now we spend 10 years effing around with no responsibility and we've kind of lost our way and i've been really interested in that and you'll see I guess what I've been, and I'm curious your perspective on this, I've seen powerful men, and I'm talking powerful as in like amazing leaders who really show up for their family and provide financially. So they put a ungodly amount of time and energy into their business and into being the provider and into going out there and hunting and doing their thing uh, to make sure that their family has at least financial stability. Yet what they Mm -hmm. say is they have found a way to they would rather spend an hour or two with their family focused where two hours, I mean, after two hours, the kid doesn't even want to hang out with dad anymore. Like dad, <laughs> too much dad, go back to the office. And they found this awesome balance, at least from what I've learned. Cause I, I, I want to have a family and I want to be the best dad I can possibly be. And it made sense to me because my dad worked a lot. We were immigrants and he worked to provide for the family and had, you know, he was never around, but when he was, we had his full attention we were a week tenting in the mountains and he was there, not distracted by the beeping and dinging. And then when it was work time, and I respect that so much about my dad, when I reflect on that, I'm just like, man, he did what he had to do. Yet when he was home, he was able to put all his stress mm. and just focus on me and my sister and take us camping for three days. Or we did a one month trip every year, regardless of anything yeah. where we went. So I may not have seen him all year, but when he was there, he was there. Um, yeah. Is that... Maybe that's a little bit different with internet business nowadays because you can build a lifestyle business around that and maybe the landscape has changed. But for those guys who, because I I get this from guys and I feel this too sometimes is am I, even with the girlfriend is I need to create and deliver, but then five o'clock on Wednesday, everything goes aside and we're going to spend three hours, just me and you time. Is that what you're getting at? Or are you talking about building a lifestyle around to be able to be around for the kids even more? Yeah, even sufficient for your family dynamic. Yeah. Right? So that's the thing is I'm all about building a life and a business on your terms. So the reality is like I love spending time with my kids. So 
my kids aren't the ones that say two hours, I'm done. They're like, right. let's hang out more. Like at this time, you know, my son is 20. Okay. My my daughter's 25. So they're a little bit older. Hello. But we've created such an intimacy, such a connection yeah. within our household that we desire more time. And we're very, you know, we, we are very strategic around that. Yeah. That may look different for other families, though. That may look different for other. And so I never want to impose my exact yeah. way on somebody else. Really, what is it that you want? And this is a big question that I ask every one of my coaching clients. What do you want? Should I do this? Should I do that? What about this? What do you think about? What about? Number one, erase all that. What do you want? Yeah. Well, I want, I want to be able to take off from work. It doesn't matter when I start because I don't really spend time in the morning with the kids or with my wife or whatever it is. So I start early and whatever, everybody goes their way. But at four o'clock, I want to make sure that I'm done by four so we can have dinner every yeah. night and then just hang out. That's what you want. That's what we build. Cool. Yeah. Somebody else might say, you know what? I want to work four days a week and I'm going to work till 7 p.m. Hustle mode, whatever. But Friday, Saturday, Sundays, I'm off every single yeah. week. That's that's what I want. Great. Let's yeah. build that. So yeah. for me, it's more about having the optionality to build what you want yeah. versus a specific way that I'm trying to get everybody to live by. Because that's not my way. That What works for me doesn't work for everybody. And what works for everybody isn't yeah. me. I want a custom made plan for every individual yeah. based on the family dynamic that you're, that they're building. Like for you, you shared your experience with your dad. And I would say that's a unique one. You know, my experience, same thing, immigrants, my dad was an entrepreneur. He would, he would be working. And one of the things that I, one of the things that I said when I got married is I want to be more present with my family. In yeah. fact, the game that I play even to this day in my mind, this is just an internal thing. I'm like, I want to be, I want to outdo my wife. I'm being present there with my kids. So when they have things at school or field trips or whatever, the game I'm playing, she doesn't know about this. It's not an actual competition, but for me, she'll know now she'll know now. Oh, now she will. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So the game yeah. I'm playing is I'm going to outdo her. Why? This goes back to my personal experience. Why? Because my dad would, he provide for, he was a great provider, but I miss yeah. out on a lot of his life. He missed out on a lot of my life. Yeah. So for me, if that was the best thing, well, that, you know, that's the best thing that he knew to do. And he did great according to what he knew. Awesome. I don't fault him for that. But for me, I want people to have the option to choose what they want with their family, with the people in their life, their spouses, their kids, their parents, their, whoever are the important and valuable people in their life, build a business to give you sufficient time, focus and attention to those people and be completely present with them. Yeah. Yeah. This should and never is, make you compromise yeah. on that stuff. Yeah. That's not to take away. It's very prevalent. I've experienced this and I've been that and I can understand how easy it is to slip into, um, well, I just have to do whatever it takes because we need to get there. We have a goal and a target and it's easy to start justifying, Hey, let's just cancel date night this week because I'll make it up on Saturday and um, it's really easy. And I'm, I understand if there's a time and place for that at times, yeah. but to do that every single week over and over and over, uh, I think that that's, that's like a culture and entrepreneurship that is uh, kind of glorified and made sexy and it looks cool for an Instagram post, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to um, some, to some, but the divorce rate, um, I actually, you probably know the state, uh, the stat, because divorce rates are high across America, but oh, I wonder if it's absolutely. higher in the entrepreneurial community than it is in the non, I'd, I'd actually be really curious to that step. I don't have it. So I, yeah. I don't want to be curious. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that yeah. up, but I would, I would think that it might be. We're an extremely passionate driven bunch who will can. And obsessive. So when yeah, we obsessive. obsess about business and our new goal, like singular minded, I got to get this. Yeah. I got to get that. That was me. Yeah. I got to get yeah. that. And it didn't matter the things in my yeah. life. Like, okay, all that one day, the yeah. one day never happens. Yeah. Yeah. So a big yeah. shift for me, big shift for me came a couple of years ago, 2018, where I was like, okay, good. I'm building business, cool families doing re really well. Like I, I was pretty, I was doing pretty well in most areas of my life. And I'm like, okay, one day I'm going to do this one day, one day, one day. Cool. And then suddenly I had some back issues, mm -hmm. like health issues. That's right. Had some, they were like creeping in a little by little. 
And it's just like, okay, it's aggravating. Okay, it's bothering me. Okay, now this is like actually hurting. Okay, now I can't be standing for real. I got to the point where now I'm like in a mastermind. I went to, a, I was in a mastermind and we were in, in Laguna Beach. So we're out there and I called and I'm like, hey, guys, I want to be there. I can't be sitting for more than 20 minutes. I'm in complete pain. Is it okay if I bring a yoga mat and be laid out in the back of this room as a mastermind? I don't want to miss it, but I, I'm struggling here. I'm in Chicago. That's a four, four hour flight. Miserable. I got to the point where I couldn't walk anymore. I've been healthy all my life. I've never had any kind of medical issues, health issues, healthy all my life. And suddenly I'm, I go yes. from that year. I traveled literally every month. I'm on pyramids. I'm in mountains. I'm in all these different beautiful places. And now I can't walk. I can't like literally my son was pushing me to the bathroom on a skateboard. Cause I couldn't get up off the floor. Right. Was this stress-based emotional based, or was this an actual, uh, I think the two play hand in hand, but was it because you were overworked and overstressed or part Absolutely. of it anyway? Yeah. Part of it, part of it. And I would say major, major part of it. Cause there was nothing physical that would have caused the yeah. pain. There was yeah. no like an injury or Oh, car okay. accident there was none of that there's like, no diagnosis was, for it no no oh, okay no well so it was emotional it was stress it was the burden that i put on myself to go 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 yeah. go go and i was like man here and so th it was the 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 <clears throat> the um the month that i got surgery finally after a while where i couldn't walk anymore ended up choosing surgery but that month i was turning 40 so this was two years ago. And I remember, you know, I'm big on mindset. I'm big on, you know, personal development. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty dialed in there. When you're in pain nonstop, 24 seven, you, you're not eating right. You're not sleeping. There's no escaping your body when you're in this pain, man, that personal development stuff kind of like right. really, yeah. it's not as bulletproof as you thought it would be when you're like, you're a prisoner to your hurting body. So it was, it was, it was, uh, man, I remember the thoughts that I had. I was like, wow, I've already lived the best of my years and I'm just turning forward. Oh, wow. The next half of my life are gone. Are, they're shot. Right. Like it put me in a really horrible state. And I started reflecting because I had nowhere to go. I was literally, you know, we had our condo this, so it's not this room, but I was in my office. Like that's where I would sleep. That's where I would eat. I wouldn't move around very much. Um, and I was reflecting on, man, what are all the things that I said one day to that I can no longer do anymore? And it just hit me. I was like, man, so many promises for a future that may never come. Mm. All right. I got to build things out moving forward. If I get, if I recover from this, I got to build these things out. So I, there is no one day for me. That day is the only day that I have. I don't know if I'm going to make it tomorrow. So how, you know, how, why am I thinking and taking for granted that I'm going to have this health, this life in another four years when things happen to look a certain way? Why not do the things now that I have the opportunity and build around it and instead of delaying this thing that may never come? Shifted, shifted even further this message of fanpreneur and building a business and a life on your terms. Right. Because we're we're living our life and building a business on other people's terms without defining what we really want. And so we're constantly growing. Here's another goal, the next goal, the next goal. Now I got yeah. 10 million, now 40 million, now 100 million, because these guys are doing that. I can do that. Yeah. Too. Is that yeah. even what you want? Yeah. It's so funny how us human beings are so uh, thick in the head and, and, and pretty stupid. We could call it that as in like, we need to learn through experience, but how many of us and me included will hear this and it takes, and I'm sure you heard it and you thought about it, but it takes experiencing that, especially if you're some hard headed entrepreneurial driven, sometimes I need to get hit so hard in the head. And these serve as beautiful reminders in my own way. And I'm sure anyone listening in their own way of um, what am I, I would almost challenge anyone listening. I'm going to challenge myself is what is one thing I've really been putting off, um, we're moving countries in like eight days, but I guarantee you within these eight days, there's this one thing that I'm just like, I'm gonna go do that yeah. right now. And actually the thing that comes to mind is I've been meaning to do a night ride with a new enduro motorcycle. And I got this huge headlight. We want to do a night ride, but I keep putting it off because I wake up early, tea meetings, and I'm like, I'm gonna cancel tea meetings, start work at 10 sometime this week and do a night ride. Yeah. 
before I leave this country. Yes. So that's my challenge. I love it. I love it. Um, you're, You're big on the mental game. Any patterns you see, let's say, I think we're all... I'm going to label it. We're all um, struggle is the wrong word, but I'll use that because it's easy. There's there's a next level for us. So maybe someone's just starting and they're trying to get to their first whatever, or maybe someone's in a comfortable place, but that comfort is eating them away. Or maybe someone is hyper successful financially, but struggling in their family or whatever that may be for anyone listening. I think human beings possess patterns. And so whatever level that may be for the next person, whoever's listening and myself and yourself, what are some common patterns you see that keep us from, in my instance, from that night ride and just keep putting it off for literally three months now. My buddy keeps asking me, do you want to go this Friday? And I was like, hey, I go to bed at nine. I'm not going out till midnight. Um, what are some common patterns that we can help all of us break through to experience a sliver of not putting something off, but experiencing it now and realizing that you can experience joy and abundance and freedom and build your business and get the feeling before you don't have to wait three years for that feeling. Right. Right. So a big one is, and I'm not saying that this is you, uh, it has been me, but a big one is just asking yourself, like, why am I even delaying? What's really behind that? And what you'll find is a lot of people, first of all, it goes back to identity. I could never do something like that. According to who? I'm not, you know what? That's for other people, not for me. According to who? Like, what's the belief that's causing you to think that? That's for them, right? Not for me, because my identity is one, I wake up at nine and I'm not violating that. Yeah. You know that you could still maintain that identity if you go out one night till midnight, right? You're still the nine o'clock guy and the guy that wakes up early, like, that's not threatened. Yeah. But we don't evaluate it that way we're not asking ourselves the questions the deeper questions why do we believe what we believe am i worthy i'm not worthy of it you know what that i just i gotta keep working because because i might lose it all yeah really what what are you basing that on Mm -hmm. and so we have we we're creating these beliefs and these habits and these behaviors around things that we've never even questioned and we take them at space. Value. Okay, that I guess that's my truth then. And I operate as if that's the truth, but is it really truth? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, re- I reread that big leap pretty much every year. That book is so tattered and torn now. But every time I read it, I'm like, wow, I have my next big breakthrough. And then looking back a year, it's like you're at the next ceiling. And this it's almost the same feeling. It's like this frustrating feeling. Now you're frustrated about 100 grand versus $1,000, but it's still mm-hmm. that same like, And it's just almost you're diving in deeper into these things. So I'm always astonished every time I have a session with like my performance coach or I reread the big leap or I do this work. I'm just like, holy shit, let me let me see how far I've come because I have. But that's not going to be an excuse for not taking the next big step. And and the glass ceiling idea is so uh, fascinating to me. Um, So it sounds like you take clients through a questioning process, which absolutely makes sense. So some of the Mm -hmm. questions is why am I delaying? Why do I believe this? Mm -hmm. who implanted this what time and what part of my life did i make this my identity i know you're huge on identity yeah very big very big because based on our identity that's how we live our life so for example if you have if your identity dictated i will not smoke crack (laughs) no matter what your surroundings are like your identity is one that won't do that like me personally i will not slap my wife right. my identity would not permit me to do such an act under right. no circumstance and so it begins to shape beliefs and behaviors because my identity is is that right sometimes we try to talk ourselves into a new identity but we have a, another quote from the bible says as a man thinks this is what's interesting many people think it says as a man thinks so is he there's actually a book that that's like that but it actually doesn't say that. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Wait a minute. But where do we think? It's here, not here. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is that you know these truths intellectually, but you haven't internalized them and made them you. Right. So knowing a thing is not the same as being the thing. Knowing I shouldn't slap my wife is one thing. 
that's not sufficient conviction for me not to do it. Like I know right. I shouldn't, but there might be a circumstance where I do. Right. Identity right. when it's me, like zero circumstances where that's going to happen. Like it's just right. not what I do. So imagine that's the case. Like this is not what I do. I do not, you know, live one day without feeling intense gratitude and spending five, 10 minutes in gratitude. I do. There is not a day that can possibly happen if I'm traveling, if I'm on a boat, an airplane, if I'm bungee jump, like it doesn't matter. One day, my identity says that every single day, this is what I do. I live in gratitude. Right. So I think a lot of people listening, uh, and I, I guess all of us, we, we intellectually understand that we're really talking about, I guess that James Allen, as a man thinketh, it should be as a man feeleth or as a man beeth or believeth or something would be maybe yeah. <laughs> proper, proper terminology. But we, we intellectually understand that I get that I need to create this much content. I need to, um, I, I know that I need to, you know, put my message out there. Or I know I need to, um, uh, work out and stop eating these potato chips or whatever that is, or wake up yeah. early or whatever. Um, I, I, I can think it and I know it, and then I can willpower my way into going to the gym for four or five days. And then I miss a day or two, three days, and now my whole identity shatters and I didn't have sufficient time to build this new identity. I'm guessing that willpower and repetition and just d doing it is maybe a, a part of the equation because it probably takes, takes some repetition, but there's some deeper, yeah. um, you were expressing the Bible of a point to your heart. So I guess becoming it or believing it becoming and up. feeling it. Um, what, what's, what's the, um, you know, obviously let's say that I grew up in an environment where crack was okay and everyone did crack. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of did it or whatever. We're going to very big sure. extremes here, but extremes are an easy way to make it happen or an environment that people stole. And I don't want to do that anymore, but I have had 30 years of conditioning in being unfair to people and taking advantage mm -hmm. of people, but I really want to change that. Yeah. And so they hear what we just heard and we all have this. So no one here is excluded because I'm sure we have something we want to change, but we keep reverting back to our old patterns. Yeah. Any, um, and, and what's cool is almost everyone listening to specializes or works in this world. And it's so easy to do it with someone else. But at times, even me, I'm just like, wow, I just helped this person so much. And like, I can take a little bit of my advice right now and like apply it, which is why I think everyone should have a coach. That aside, I'm sure we're all struggling to change some behavioral or some habits. Um, what, what are you usually working so people can go from their head to their hearts? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that question that I asked you one time that um, really stood out to you because you commented on it? Yeah. I asked you a question and it was about the cost. Yeah, what's the cost of, of doing this? And it was mostly around uh, money, how my time was spent. By the way, we've just hired somebody else. So I literally have a team now that I could die tomorrow and things would still tick away. So that was Love that. in large part due to that conversation. But uh, something around that was the cost of yeah. doing everything, being the hero or the savior. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that that question, what's the cost? People are motivated by two things. This is like psych psychology 101, either pain, avoiding yeah. pain or going towards pleasure. Yeah. All right. So if I say... I'm going to give you a thousand dollars to cross the street. Great. Great. I'll cross the street. I'm going to give you a thousand dollars to cross the street. You're blindfolded. You have headphones on noise canceling, and you don't know if there's what time it is. So it might be traffic hour. It might not be. Depends on uh, desperate. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but yeah. it's the same reward. Yeah. But the cost of the second, yeah. the cost of the second instance is way too great far exceeds the reward. Okay, great. Yeah. So like, if you want to change your environment, what is the cost of remaining in the environment? Like you have yeah. to know that. Otherwise you're going to go back to that environment. Yeah. The cost yeah. isn't all that great. Like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing 20 grand in my coaching business every single month. It's awesome. I want to get to 50. Okay, great. What is it costing you not to get there? Well, I don't have, you know, I don't have second house, but like we're good with our house now. And, you know, I wake up at noon and that's all good. Like, okay, I have to wake up a little earlier. Cool. Like there's no incentive in that. So as much willpower as you have, like there's not really a cost to you remaining the same. For you to stay there, like the cost is 
the cost is not that much to motivate you to do something much greater. Mm -hmm. But if you start thinking, like I remember going to a Tony Robbins Unleash the Power with it years ago, I don't know, 15 years ago. And he's like, what's the worst thing that can happen if you don't get your marriage in order? And back then we were still young in our marriage. We celebrated 21 years uh, last month. We we're still pretty young into it. Thank you. And I was just thinking like we were kind of clashing heads a little bit. And I remember him asking like, what's the worst that can happen if you're not there for your family? You know, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my God, my wife is like a prostitute. Like I'm super exaggerating. I like literally felt that mm -hmm. I felt I'm like, Oh no, no, no. I got to get this right. Because my kids are not going to be abandoned calling some other dude, their dad. They don't want anything to do with me. Like I'll, that that's my legacy. And I have nothing to do with it anymore. Cause they don't want any involvement. Like I do them harm instead of good. No, mm -hmm. it stops mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. deep to the core. The cost was so high and here's the magic. None of that was even real. It was just, yeah. yeah in my mind, I visualized it, visualized it so clearly that that was sufficient for me to change yeah. the motivation. The cost rose, even though my circumstance, like in the real world, outside of my thought world, the real world, like it was yeah. the same day as just any day. Yeah. I, but the I cost became so yeah. high. Yeah. It forced me to change. I love how you say that because I think we're, uh, I think there's this toxic kind of positivity, only think positive thoughts. And I'm obviously a big reader in, in Stoic philosophy that actually saved my life years ago. And I've, I've, I really resonate with the philosophy and I actually saw a lot of relation to Stoicism, to uh, Christianity and early day Christianity. And, and I mean, it stemmed it around the same time, sort of, kind of, anyways, without the history of that, um, how you can use your negative mm, imagination to for your own good. And it sounds like you've done that. And I love when people aren't afraid of talking about the worst case and exploring the worst case. I think it's really healthy. Um, am I willing to accept that or not? So I guess you're, um, you're trying to, and we're trying to not get to rock bottom, not lose our walking ability and trying to avoid that. Yet sometimes we do have to go through that because we just, I, I think there's a gift for all of us. And, and sometimes yeah. we have to go through that, but, um, to not stay stuck in repeating behaviors and to just use the worst case scenario as a bit of a, uh, a taster of what it could be if you don't change it now. Yeah. And you Which can imagine for me. that. Yeah. And you can imagine it. Like you don't have to live it out. So yeah. don't take any of my words for this. Like literally yeah. a put yourself in a situation where you wake yeah. up one day and you know, you can no longer walk. I don't want you yeah. to wait till that happens. You can no longer walk, put yourself in a situation where you don't have tomorrow you're not going to wake up. Would you go for the ride tonight? Yeah. Probably, right? It changes the context of yeah. your thought process. Yeah. So now you make different decisions. And it's like that with anything. Why don't I post every single day? Well, you have a belief, but what is it going to cost you if you really don't? Yeah. What is it going to cost if I don't make, if I don't help some people? Like, oh, right now, because Alex isn't out there, somebody might get a divorce today because of me. Yeah. Yeah. Not like it's my fault. I didn't cause a divorce, but yeah. I didn't save them. I wasn't present to save them. Right. That's on my watch. Uh-uh, not going to happen. Right. Love how you bring that up because I was told I was, uh, they were like, oh, that's probably not the healthiest thing. And it's not, I live in 98% of the time in um, imagining the best case scenario and staying really high vibration. I just, I, I don't want to live a life that's anything but not vibrant and exciting. But I do spend a small portion of time every morning thinking about if I don't pull this through and if I don't lead in the way I know I can, there's going to be people on the team who um, who who are not. No, I'm going to have to have that conversation. And that scares the hell out of me because I love the team so much and I love them as human beings. And I feel like I have this purpose to show up and lead, even if I don't feel like it. And I use that all of the time for like five or 10 minutes, some mornings, I don't want to get yeah. out of bed. And I just think about the team and I, I need to show up or they're not going to have yeah. a job if I fuck yeah. this up. Um, so I love how you say that. Cause I think in healthy doses, it's an extremely powerful tool not to live in that all the time. Cause you'll be all yeah. gloomy and depressed, but I mean, I think it's a really healthy tool. And here's a differentiator here is a lot of people live in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there's a saying that means to an end, right? The end is, I got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this via this, this tool that I have is like looking at worst case scenario. This is problem solving. I'm going to use that for a positive end. Right. 
right. so that I'm, right. I show up for my team, so that they get to live a great life. They get to be stable. They don't feel the that maybe I'm not going to have a job into it. Like I'm going to do it for that. Right. I'm glad that I have the ability to pop back into the positive, but I'm going to use the negativity when possible for a better outcome. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's not that yeah. I live there, but it's a tool that yeah. I have. And I would, yeah. I would be cheating myself and the people I'm attached to if I don't use all the tools that I have at my disposal. Now, is that a recommendation for everyone? No, because some people are just, they're pessimistic. They're just always looking at the negative. I will not add more to that. Like for them, right? different, but I know your audience and your audience is, yeah. they're hopeful. They're visionaries. These They're big dreamers. And so like, Ah, a healthy well, sometimes too much sometimes means. too much yeah <laughs> sometimes sometimes too optimistic where you think nothing will happen uh so i think that's really healthy for probably everyone listening we just think in one week everything will work out and it's like well yeah. let's explore it might not yeah. so let's just let's just get realistic here let's bring you back down to uh you know a little more realism here and, and hope for the best and shoot for the stars alex we could do this for another eight hours if people want to find and continue this conversation and keep diving into these beliefs and the mindset work and the fanpreneur and the marketing and the, the, the business coaching and consulting, all the work you're doing and your beard, if, if you're listening and you want to check out Alex's beard, um, you know, check out mine first and then Alex's and then let us know which yeah. one's better. Cause I'm actually really, really interested. I'm, I'm, I went to the barber a few days ago and they keep cutting it. Like I keep saying I want to grow it, but every time they yeah. trim it, they chop it off. And I, it's hard. It's a fine balance between growth and grooming. Yes. I'm having a hard definitely. time with it. I need to get some tips. Yeah, for I you. say, I say um, just taper the sides and leave the yeah. bottom and let that and grow Taper the sides. And then it's just kind of, it gives it a good shape and, and then, you know, different products too. Yeah. Help. So I don't um, use products. That's my problem. I think moisturize it. There's beard you gotta oil. Do all that, eh? yeah, you do gotta that. do that stuff. I don't do that. All right. All right. Um, Your face is worth, worth the investment. Worth the oils. Uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you to check all that out and more? Yeah, for sure. Um, best way. I have so many different ways to come into my world. Best way is just to go to alexnavas.com. In fact, if you're interested in one of the things that I love to teach is to own your value. A lot of, a lot of people are devaluing what they do, how they do it, the transformation, the effects that they have on the people they serve. So what I like to show people is like, man, you're really, you're more awesome than you're giving yourself credit for, credit for. So if they're interested in doing that, they can go to alexnavas.com forward slash freebie. And I created something called the premium offer pyramid there that just kind of shows them how to escalate their price, how to escalate the value and the transformation for their clients while also getting paid very well for who they are first and foremost. And what they do secondly. Beautiful. We'll That's have that link. Absolutely free. We'll have that link below. We'll have some links to your social media stuff. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. I ask everyone this question. I think we've already extracted it from you, but I'll, I'll let you think on this. And if there's got to be a minute or two of silence, I'm cool with that. No, not weird. Um, I've taken a wild guess at this and I'm going to take that you're not going to be offended by this, but I believe when I do the numbers, you're going to be 42. Correct. Maybe 43, 42. Cool. So my numbers 42. are right. Oh, I'm 42. Um, 42. So, and you've been through, it looks like two fairly large uh, lessons. First, losing your one or two mortgages businesses and kind of losing the material aspect of your life and re and then also losing the ability to walk, which I would argue is maybe bigger than the first. Um, massive lessons learned along the way, a ton of pain. I can only imagine ton of lessons uh, married for uh, 21 or 22 years now. 21. 21 massive, le massive uh, lessons there. Uh, daughter and son, like like a ton of wisdom, a ton of stuff. If we could help accelerate or at least drop one nugget to us, you know, 30, 32, 34 year olds over here to, um, you know, maybe it'll land for us now or maybe we're just going to remember that. I remember Alex saying this and in front of me is the situation and I'm going to help step through this a little bit more powerfully and empowered, what would be something you'd love to pass down to your kids or this audience, or just pass down as your legacy with what you know right now at 42? Great question. Biggest thing I would say is, well, two things. Number one, 
you are worthy. And number two, you are mo already more than enough. We don't have the conviction and the belief in ourselves because those two things are called into question. Are we worthy? Are we enough? But if you already know, if your baseline is, I am worthy, I am enough, nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible because you're not, you're looking at yourself as a whole and healthy human, not as somebody broken or lacking or in a, in a, in a position of victimhood, whether real or not, right? Whether self-inflicted or not, you are worthy. You're not broken. You are enough. You, nobody needs to give you permission. Nobody needs to approve you. You're already, I believe. God has given you life, and so that life already has intrinsic value that cannot be given by anybody else or superseded by anybody else when he's already breathed his breath into you. So that tells me if you're here, your assignment isn't done, right. and you're already worthy, and you're already enough. So relate it took me and so feel 38 that. years to figure that out. I feel that as absolutely true. So thank you for sharing guys if, if anyone wants to uh, i highly recommend you connect with alex um really really value you i value presence your energy what you give how you serve how you show up i think it's rare and what i know about you i'm 98 percent sure but i want to say with 100 percent certainty i guess you could never know that you're also fully aligned as in like when you say it you also do your best to do it in your real life whether that's with your family and i value that I think it's hard to find in a world where you never really know. So for anyone who's looking for a uh, role model or a mentor or, or someone to just follow that shares the truth, uh, I value that about you. And if anyone else is looking for that, then I highly recommend they check out your website. Appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thanks, Alex.